like I watched the Anthony Dia one and there's a girl disassociated or something. I think her name she's British and um like I watched it and I was like, oh like she seems crazy. But I know that's like like We need to talk. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. So if you are like me, if you are somebody trying to actively improve your mental health and learn a little bit more about it, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. But a bunch of you have subscribed. We just passed 80,000 subscribers. Welcome. And thank you to all you Rewired Soldiers out there who have stuck around for all this time. I love all of you. All right, so yeah, something that I try to do is educate people about mental health. Although I'm not a licensed therapist or psychologist or anything like that, I am somebody who has struggled with mental illness throughout my entire life. I'm also a recovering drug addict with seven and a half years clean. And something that helps me with my own mental health is learning as much as possible about my own disorders, as well as other ones. I think it's crucial that if you care about mental health, you should educate yourself about other disorders. Because although we are making headway when it comes to talking about depression, talking about this uh, anxiety, there are many other disorders that are highly stigmatized, right? So it helps to educate ourselves about the other ones so we have a little bit more empathy. So a lot of you have been here, um, you know, because we've been talking about dissociative identity disorder, borderline personality disorder, and the YouTube channel Dissociate Did, she made a response to Trisha Paytas' video, and she shares her own experience and talks about when Trisha Paytas says, you know, multiple personalities. But anyways, I, I wanna show you this clip real quick. No, 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 no. The alters are formed because the conscious mind dissociates essentially from itself. Dissociative identity disorder alters are fragmented parts of your consciousness. They are all their own individuals, they develop as their own individuals, as I said, but it is formed because a child experiencing extreme or repeated childhood trauma cannot deal with the knowledge and the awareness that this is happening to them. So the brain dissociates. It puts up a wall, amnesia, between different parts of the consciousness so that some parts will remember this trauma, some parts will hold traumatic memories to be able to deal with it, and others won't. The whole disorder is built around dissociation. That is why it was renamed dissociative identity disorder. It's not a personality disorder. Yes, multiple personalities are involved with it, but dissociation is an integral part of DID. You cannot have DID, dissociative identity disorder, and not dissociate. It also involves other types of dissociation, subcategories like derealization, depersonalization, otherwise known as DPDR. So no, you cannot have multiple personalities, you cannot have MPD, you cannot have DID without dissociation. It is a dissociative disorder. So yeah, let's discuss real quick, all right? So they have pretty much gotten rid of the term multiple personality dis disorder, even though that is still like kind of the mainstream um, term for it, but it has since then been changed in the Diagnostic Statistical Manual to dissociative identity disorder, right? So what does it mean to have multiple personalities? I think the first thing that we need to do is separate dissociative identity disorder from having multiple personalities, okay? You can have multiple personalities without it being a disorder. And in this video, we're gonna do a little test because they actually have something called the self-monitoring test that we're gonna talk about in just a second. But as you heard from Dissocia Did from that clip, she talks about it not just being different personalities, which is something that Trisha Paytas kind of discusses. And I think it's important that we talk about that. We've already discussed how one of the key symptoms of borderline personality disorder is lacking this sense of self. And something I try to teach people is something that I've learned throughout the years is that although many of us, many, many, many of us would not be diagnosed with a disorder, a lot of us can relate to certain symptoms. And I think understanding that can help us empathize more with people who do have legitimate disorders. So a lot of us, we, we change ourselves in different situations, all right? So it can seem as though we have multiple personalities, but what does that mean? So recently, just in the last few months, 
I got really interested in the topic of introverts versus extroverts, all right? And I've often wondered like, am I an ambivert, right? Because I, I stay inside a lot. Uh, I'm in Las Vegas. My beautiful girlfriend, Tristan and I, we hardly ever go out. Um, the most I go out really is with my son to the movies. But um, part of it is because of my sobriety and that I'm getting older, but I don't you know, take full advantage of the Las Vegas ex uh, experience, right? But although I'm you know, pretty introverted, when the situation arises, I can have a different personality. For example, this YouTube channel, when I was working at the rehab center, I was doing groups in front of anywhere from 50 to over 100 people depending on which group I was doing. And when I do groups, I try to be very charismatic and engaging because I don't want people to feel bored, right? But anyways, somebody who I could really relate to was Dr. Brian Little, okay? He has an amazing book called Me, Myself, and Us. And a lot of it is about introversion versus extroversion. I actually learned about Dr. Brian Little from the book by Susan Cain. Susan Cain, has uh, one of the most famous books about being an introvert. It's called Quiet. I'm gonna link both those books down in the description below. So if you would like to learn more about introverts versus extroverts, I highly recommend these books. Susan Cain's book is more about like the benefits of being an introvert. And it was absolutely phenomenal. But what I could really relate to, and one of the reasons I picked up Dr. Brian Little's book is because he talked about being an introvert, but he does like these speaking engagements and everything about his research, but afterwards he feels completely drained. And that is one of the signs of being an introvert. So for me personally, like I was like, oh my God, I can relate to that. Because even though I would do like groups in front of a lot of people and I would have clients coming up and answering uh, or asking me questions afterwards, like after that, I would have to go in my office and just like close my door and just like reset, <laughs> all right? But anyways, getting back to multiple personalities, Dr. Brian Little, he actually has a lot of different tests that you could take um, from the book. And one of them that I want to talk today about multiple personalities and how it, it is different than dissociative identity disorder. And it's different, like that's one of the reasons Dissocia did talk about this. Like people do have multiple personalities and there's actually a test you could take. Okay, it's called the social monitoring test. So I'm gonna run through the questions with you real quick. If you want, pause this video real quick, get a piece of paper, cause you'll need it. But I'll also link it down in the description below. All right, so pause for a second if you need to. All right, we're back. Okay, so let's look at the social monitoring scale, which comes from Mark Snyder, and he's a psychologist, okay? So we'll uh, ask these questions, answer them, and then discuss what that means, okay? You're ready, this is 18 questions, answer them true or false. All right, so I find it hard to imitate the behavior of other people. My behavior is usually an expression of my true inner feelings, attitudes, and beliefs. At parties and social gatherings, I do not attempt to do or say things that others will like. I can only argue for ideas which I already believe. I can make impromptu speeches even on topics about which I have almost no information. I guess I put on a show to impress or entertain people. When I am uncertain how to act in a social situation, I look to the behavior of others for cues. I would probably make a good actor. I rarely seek the advice of my friends to choose movies, books, or music. I sometimes appear to others to be experiencing a, a deeper emotions than I actually am. I laugh more when I watch a comedy with others than when alone. In groups of people, I am rarely the center of attention. In different situations and with different people, I often act like very different persons. I am not particularly good at making other people like me. Even if I am not enjoying myself, I often pretend to be having a good time. I'm not always the person I appear to be. I would not change my opinions or the way I do things in order to please someone else or win their favor. I have considered being an entertainer. In order to get along and be liked, I tend to be what people expect me to be rather than anything else. I have never been good at games like charades or improvisational acting. 
I have trouble changing my behavior to suit different people in different situations. At a party, I let others keep the jokes and stories going. I feel a bit awkward in company and do not show up quite as well as I should. I can look anyone in the eye and tell a lie with a straight face, if for a right end. I may deceive people by being friendly when I dislike them. All right, so in the link down below, like I said, I will link this test that I was reading from so you could take it yourself. The thing is, at the end, the results, it just gives you a percentage. So I have a little answer key that was provided in that book, Me, Myself, and Us. Um, so go ahead, and if you're write writing down true or false to these, let's run through it real quick, all right? So I'm gonna read off um, true or false for each question, and you're gonna add up that total at the end of this, all right? One. False, two, false, three, false, four, true, five, true, six, true, seven, false, eight, true, nine, false, 10, true, 11, false, 12, true, 13, false, 14, false, 15, false, 16, false, 17, true, 18, true. All right. So, depending on your score, those who are higher, who had more circled answers, you would be considered a high social monitor. Those on the lower end of the scale are low self monitors, all right? So what does that mean, okay? So basically, high self monitors, they adapt to different situations, okay? And this so much doesn't have uh, everything to do with introversion versus extroversion, but somebody like me who is an introvert, I can also be a high social monitor, right? So like I said, I adapt to different situations depending on it, okay? And that could be good, that could be good, right? I, I act different ways, like you know, if I'm talking to my boss rather than just talking to a coworker, talking to my parents versus talking to a friend, you know, all those different things, right? And for some people that could be very beneficial, but in a second, we'll talk about the downside and why sometimes social monitoring gets intertwined with ethics and morals, okay? So low self monitors, they tend to stay static in every single situation, all right? So there were questions like, you know, uh, I, I stay exactly the same, I don't change my opinions on things depending on who I'm around, right? So this, this person is acting the same in every single situation, they stay exactly true to themselves. They are not, you know, going to agree with everything that other people say. And although some people might, you know, score higher on there, there is, you know, this this amount of like morals and ethics, uh, and it's your own personal code. It's what matters to you. I read a lot of books about moral philosophy and psychology and all that kind of stuff. But one of the concerns with high social monitors are that they are BSers, right? that they will BS people and then, you know, they'll get found out or whatever it is. So for me personally, I adapt to different situations, but I have my own moral compass. Like I'm not going to flat out, here's a good example. I'm half black. I'm not going to be around racists and then all of a sudden adopt their racist views. I'm going to speak up and say something about it. But, but in a certain social situation, I might not you know, if somebody says they like a movie, I might not be like, yo, that movie's stupid. You know what I mean? Um, so there is that kind of fine line. Then there are low so, uh, uh, social monitors where there are obviously upsides to it, staying static the entire time. What you see is exactly what you get no matter what situation they're in. But there are some people who rate really, really low on that social monitoring scale where it can be difficult because sometimes if you don't adapt to the situation, like for example, a job interview, if you are too much yourself, it can lose you a job, right? So there are pros and cons to this, but this is part of having different personalities. So you might only have like a certain amount of personalities that you turn to if you're lower on the social monitoring scale. Those who are higher on the social monitoring scale, you might be a lot of different things to a lot of different people in your life, all right? Whether that's good or bad, kind of up to you, depending on, you know, your moral compass, your ethics, you know, but I think what we all need to do is look at it and say, is where I rate on this social monitoring scale, like, does it cause issues in my life? 
You know what I mean? And that's when we gotta, we gotta kind of adjust. Like, for example, I used to be a huge people pleaser. That made me depressed. It made me angry, right? Like I would agree to do things that I didn't want to do. So personally, I have had to find a balance. But anyways, I hope taking this test and learning a little bit more about personality traits helps you understand why somebody like Dissociate Did is saying, you know, there is a difference between dissociative identity disorder and multiple personalities. And I, I believe, I haven't uh, dove into the history of the DSM and why they changed the name. I'm sure you can find that somewhere else. Maybe I'll do a video on that sometimes. But there is a clear difference between dissociative identity disorder and people who are just rating higher on the social monitoring scale. All right, but anyways, hope that gives you a little bit better understanding. Okay, something um, you know I've just been really fascinated with lately is personality traits, introversion and extroversion. Um, I have some videos that I've scripted out but haven't done yet about you know like the Myers-Briggs scale and everything. But depending on what you guys like and don't like, that's how I kind of gear my content. So if there's more you would like to learn about introversion, extroversion, the Myers-Briggs scale and all that, let me know down in the comments below. Okay, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who buys my mental health books over at TheRewiredSoul.com. And stay tuned, right after I upload this video, I will be making some massive updates to TheRewiredSoul.com, so make sure you check that out, all right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.